Delighted to be joined in studio now by JJ Fay. Uh, good afternoon to you, JJ. How are you doing? Hi, Kyle. Thanks for having good, me on. Great, Thanks good to have you in studio. And uh, as you say, you're uh, director of the Bluebird uh, Care Ireland uh, yes. organisation. So I was having a look at their website uh, beforehand, and uh, you're saying you're in Ireland now roughly 10 years, but uh, the franchise initially wasn't started in Ireland. Is that right? Yes, well, it's uh, the franchise in Ireland is is uh, ten years old uh, this year, so it's our ten year anniversary. Um, originally, it was a, a UK organisation, but the the company in Ireland is you know a wholly owned company with twenty six local franchises then throughout the country. Right. So we cover the entire country with with, with local offices, locally owned offices. So, for example, myself and, and my business partner would own this area here for Dublin West and then mm. County Meath, say for example, outside of that. But it, it provides for local ownership, which is which is a really good model. Right. And one of the things which I was very interested to hear when we were speaking before the show um, was that the care model that um, you uh, undertake you know, it's not specifically aimed at what people would traditionally think care packages would be aimed no. at the older population. It's across the board. Yes, yeah. I yeah. mean, it, obviously we have a, a population that wants to stay in their community and wants to stay mm. at home, uh, as everybody does. Uh, it's not specific to age. So a lot of mm. the people we look after are under 18, for example. We might look after children who have special needs, um, or who need, uh, for example, you know, f- physical assistance as well, or we look after young adults. Um, we work with with uh, with older people as well. So, it's all age groups. It's all all throughout the age spectrum that that Bluebird Care would work with around the country. And uh, you know, when somebody comes to you for you know, how is someone normally referred to yourselves? It can be a, f- a few different ways. I mean, we we obviously we're a supplier of care for the HSE, mm. so um, we provide HSE older person services and disability services with with large amounts of care around Ireland. We'd be one of the largest suppliers of care there um, sometimes it can be private people who actually um, who, who engage our service as well some people will, will actually come to you privately but vast majority of cases will come through the HSE coordinators um, for home care packages whether they're for older people or for, for people uh, under 65 Right and uh, you were saying that the um you know the age range, obviously, as we know, is is quite varied. But there are there there are very specific treatments that uh, are possible to undertake in the home. Then I was very surprised to hear one of them. You're saying is home dialysis, and you yes, know that yeah. that would be something yeah. that you'd imagine would require weekly visits to hospital uh, a couple d- of times a week, daily visits maybe to hospital. Yeah, uh, yeah. and that is the idea that you can. We've changed the, the industry slightly so you can move uh, certain services into the community. You don't have to mm. go into an acute setting to get certain things done or to, you know, if you had a certain level of dependence before, a, high, a higher dependency, uh, for example, that you should actually still be able to come home with the right level of professional services in mm. the area. It can be done for, for the most part of people. So, um, you know, we do have different services we offer from independent living to, you know, spinal injury cases we'd work with, uh, for example, and they can be more specialist in nature. So it's not the just the the idea that most people would have maybe of home health services and home care packages. They are something we provide mm. in, in, a, in a large way in, in Dublin 15 in particular. Um, but there's a lot more outside of that. Once you have the fully rounded service with, with the right staff and the right management and supervision, um, you can do that. And uh, you also make it available of the services of Fantastic quite quite uh, <laughs> yes widely as well. How does that work for you? Well, Fantastic, uh, I mean, they're an excellent initiative, a uh, great charity that we, we support. We launched uh, a new support of them just on Tuesday mm. in Bull Island on the Nature Reserve, and we've actually sponsored 35 of their minibuses. So this is an integral uh, part of a local transport scheme where people with disabilities or older people can actually get to hospital appointments or to mass or to get out and do their shopping. Um, And there's a lot of these schemes around the country and we certainly recognise the need for it in Dublin um, ourselves. And Mm. when we found out about Fantastic, they were a perfect organisation for us to support and partner with. Um, and I think it's it's an excellent charity. And and how does that, um, the Fantastic Service, just... to focus on that for a second does that get paid for in the same way as, as a taxi service would get paid I for or is it yes I think I yeah. think so or it can be so it's heavily subsidised I'd assume you know right, it's yeah. heavily subsidised they're obviously a separate organisation to us that's part of our, yeah, of our, course, our, yeah. our corporate social responsibility model generally we, we, we 
we um, provide 40% of our marketing budget towards mm. corporate, corporate social responsibility projects. So this would have fallen in under that. Um, and, you know, we couldn't have chosen a better partner really to support for, for a transport Absolutely, service. yeah. And uh, just in terms of the staff structure, JJ, as well, that you have, you know, you're saying the vast majority of your staff would be you know, carers in the the home setting for your clients, but there's also a good deal of, of nursing backup yes. available there yeah. as well. Isn't yeah, there? there is. I mean, the, the administration function, if you like, uh, locally in the 26 offices that we have, has to have a, a certain level of specialist knowledge to be able to yeah. do the, the type of care we do as well on, on top of, of uh, uh, the more lower dependency work we might do. So in terms of uh, supervision and care management and, and uh, coordination, we'd have a lot of bespoke systems. Uh, you know, we use a lot of, of technology actually to produce what we do as well today yeah. to keep all of our, our scheduling very tight and very, very good. And then, you know, even even proof of delivery systems. So our carers would use apps on their mobile phones. Oh, really? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yes, yeah. Brilliant. So it, it's it's moved on again. You know, there's yeah. a, there's a techn- technological aspect to what we're doing as well because we're, we have a largely field-based staff. And I think mm. anyone with a large field-based staff needs to embrace technology into the future of course to, to, do, be able yeah. to do it more efficiently. Yeah, well, I suppose purely from point of view of, you know, keeping an eye on where everybody is and it that they're, that yeah. they're at the same, yeah. Yeah, at absolutely. the location they're meant to be. Well, yeah, and the app yeah. on our phone, for example, does does record that, for example. When, right. a, care, when a care assistant goes into somebody's house, mm. we know that that's happened. It tells us on a, on a system and it tells the carer that they've, they've clocked at the right address and everything oh, like that. So yeah. it, it provides for what's called proof of delivery whereby somebody can mm. actually say, I know that that person came to my mum or dad today because I can see on this system there that they clocked in at the front door at two o'clock and they left at three o'clock. That's so fantastic. It, it yeah. kind of does provide for, uh, you know, uh, we can't see anything outside of that, but when they hit no, the green course, and, yeah. and red buttons, you see that bit. You know, that they're, they're, they've been there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it, it yeah. just It's reassurance. And I mean, as with all home care agencies or care agencies in general, you know, I'm sure you you probably have a, a mountain of legalities to cover as well for for new staff. Have you? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, it's it's an unregulated industry mm. home care in Ireland. Um, now we've been lobbying lobbying quite hard for a number of years for regulation in the industry, but in the absence of it, I mean, we do uh, set our our organisations up mm. to a certain level of regulation, self regulation, which is the only one available. Um, and then what we do is we, we also get a, a, an audit every year from the Excellence and Quality Authority of Ireland. Right, so okay. Bluebird Care has, uh, is the current business group of the year. Okay, award brilliant. For, from the EIQA. So that's for essentially the dedication to um, uh, having these audits around the, the country in all of our locations so that we can actually um, you know, attest to the fact that our, our policies and procedures and quality management systems are, are, are at the highest level. Um, so that's important again that someone can walk in and see that we have a Q mark in each, yeah. in each of our offices that tells you that all of those offices are professionally run. Um, that's three three in the last four years we've, we've won business group of the year. Um, that's some going, so isn't that? I mean, uh, we're, we're we're dedicated to it yeah. because you know, it, as I said, in the absence of regulation, you have to find some sort of accreditation and regulation where possible. So mm-hmm. that's uh, you know that's something we're we're uh, we're keen to do. And just like to be clear on that, JJ, like you were saying, you know, with no official regulation. Does that mean literally anybody can start up a care mm, organisation well, or it, it, is it not that easy? Yeah, you could say that. Mm. Uh, will, will it work? Possibly not. Probably, I mean, yeah. As I said earlier on, we work essentially in many of our cases for the HSE. Right. Um, and to work for the HSE, you have to undergo tender processes. Of and course, You have yeah. to uh, sign service level agreements, which have you know fairly high. Mm. When you say this, there's, it's, it's legislative, really. There's no legislative regulation. Right, However, okay. When you are providing services to the HSE, there's a, a very strict criteria uh, and there is um, a very strong SLA behind mm. every service provider. So uh, you have to keep up to those levels. Generally, we try and stay very far above them. Yes, um, I can imagine. And yeah. that's, that's yeah. what you strive to do. Um, well, so I mean, with three awards in four years, it sounds like you've certainly achieved that, well, you know. Thank God, yeah. For, yeah. for a fairly new, relatively new company of 10 yeah. years, you know. It's, it's quite some going. But um, just to, to give an idea of your own background in it, I mean, you were telling me beforehand your, your previous incarnation, so to speak, was mm. about as different as it's possible yeah. to get. Yeah, so I, I worked in financial services yeah. for almost a decade right. and uh, along with a, with a friend of mine since we were very young children just playing locally in, in, in this area ourselves uh, we, we got together and started this up 
uh, our franchises in 2011. Right. Um, so we're we're involved in the industry now six years, which is nearly as long as I was involved in the last industry I, I was in. But mm. it's certainly more enjoyable, more rewarding. You know, uh, obviously to work for yourself is is, is very good, but. Um, there's a lot of responsibility in what oh, we do. Oh, huge, I'd uh, say, yeah. And uh, that's th- but th- there's a lot of pride in that as well, and it, especially in providing a good service and making changes. Mm. Um, that there's a there's a very good uh, feeling around that. So, uh, myself and Gavin have been, you know, striving for the highest levels probably since 2011, as I said when we started, and thankfully we've we've been rewarded in terms of the fact that the the, the organisation has done quite well and mm. we've got a lot of staff now employed in in, in our two areas you're saying they're roughly 2,000 countrywide 2,000 uh, they're about to co- mm. head over 2,000 countrywide which yeah. is as you can you can see a, a very quite large a bit, employer yeah. a large a large provider um, but growing and growing fast and, and Brilliant, yeah. that is probably one of the the things we're keenest to do at the moment is to expand our, our staff all over okay uh, clinic, uh, the clinical side and our um, our, our care staff, our, our care assistants, because we work in homes, we work in in certain residential units, we work in all types of settings, um, and you know we've we are in Dublin West in particular. We would be constantly seeking uh, applicants at the moment from right. from, from healthcare assistants or from carers and from uh, you know special needs assistants and, and mm. really all backgrounds. And you know as well as that. Um you know, I suppose the the other thing is you, you've uh, got to retain the staff that you have. You know, so yeah. yeah well, I having mean, it's, a happy it's, staff. It is sounds important. like the the testimonials that you have, and you know, both from your clients and the staff on the website are very impressive as well. You know, again, yeah. Thankfully, we, we've been we've been lucky, and um, you know, our recruitment method and the recru- recruitment selection criteria is very strong, and that means we generally get excellent staff, um, mm. and. You know, as you say, retention is a, just as important as recruitment. So we have yeah. to, you know, we're 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 always keen to try different initiatives to keep our staff happy. And mm. um, we have a point system, for example. We mentioned an app that the, the staff would use. We yes, have, we have yeah, a point system whereby yeah. they will get discounts and discounted holidays or different offers from all manner of, of retail outlets. Uh, yeah. a couple of thousand retail outlets a, across Ireland. God, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, we would have regular different. Uh, things yeah. uh, going ahead for care staff um, and last year would have had a, an eye care award ceremony whereby each each carer in locations put in a submission a poem or a song or why they became a carer why they, why yeah. they do what they do and um, it was excellent to see you know there was there was then there was 20 finalists out out in still oh, we had a great yeah. day out and great. Um, there was a there was a essentially like a national carer of the year award uh, done then so there it's important to recognize that uh, because it, it's uh, it's not always an easy job. It can mm. be challenging. It, as I said, it's field based, so you're going from place to place. It's not it's not uh, where you arrive in at nine and you finish at five. No, work God, no. Three hundred and sixty five days a year, twenty four seven in this in this organisation. And no two clients are ever the same. So no two clients, yeah, but that's yeah. part of the beauty of it. Really. Yeah, of course, I mean, and yeah. especially if you provide services to all age groups, we mm. we have we have staff who have started out in the home health area and then expanded their knowledge through the QQI award yeah. system to uh, to maybe working with people with, with children with special needs or or people with intellectual disabilities. And their day is varied then. You know, yes, they can start yeah. out maybe working with somebody who needs physical assistance to get out of bed and, and some personal care. Then at lunchtime it might be, you know, um, a different a social care visit maybe. Yeah, exactly. lunchtime. And then it might be an after school uh, visit in the evening and carrying out the, the speech and language therapy and the, uh, the physiotherapy or the, the work is set out by the mm. SNAs in the school, for example. So it can be, it can be a very, very day then for, for staff, which they tend to, to really like. Mm. And uh, as well as that, I'm just thinking in 2011, it was quite a challenging time to start up in yeah, the economic yeah. environment. That was around at the time. <laughs> you know, was, was that uh, a brave decision or a wise one in hindsight, well, do you think? Well, it was difficult, yeah. It yeah. was. It was a challenging climate, but um, I guess, you know, it, it's one of those services that doesn't really change or shouldn't really change yeah. with you know the financial state of, a, of an economy of, an, of a country you know yeah. people, people don't get better or more mobile or more <laughs> able because there, yeah. there's less money in the exchequer so yeah. I guess our thinking on it was that it was a resilient industry to, yeah, to get involved in yeah. and uh, maybe kind of protected from things like that you know to a degree I mean I think there was a couple of million home care errors slashed in, in about 2010 or 2012 That's or right, around yeah. that time so you know th- it, it wouldn't have got off completely free the, the area and mm. but it's making its way back and I think 
you know, even the recent news of Brendan Courtney, for example, uh, yes, and his documentary. Yeah. And that was excellent. Yeah, it was excellent. And I heard that there was a there was another radio station had a similar story on this morning about a thirty year old son who who was you know offered a place in a nursing home. Mm. Um, you know, things like that uh, have brought uh, you know our independent living services, which obviously it's, yeah. it, it works well with BCIL as well. Yeah. That you know for people to be able to choose their own accommodation in their own locality and to actually have a package of care, a bespoke one tailored to their need, mm. put in place around that so that yeah. they can stay in their their local area. They don't have to move away from friends or family that or makes such social a links people, that they've already it? built. Yeah, I yeah. mean, as we, when we spoke earlier on, I said, you know, if you're from, you know, northeast Dublin and someone offers you an address somewhere in a different county, you may not yeah. really want to go there. Not so. for Jay, it might be a nice house, but exactly. no thanks. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. most people know what they, where yeah. they want to live yeah. more, so the location is the most important thing. So I think that idea of kind of allowing people to choose their own mm. location and their own unit uh, of accommodation, that, that's, a, that's a really good one. And it's something where we're really heavily committed to, that, that independent living zone as well. Yeah, and I mean, just from the time that you've been in it, you know, is there one thing that you've found most rewarding about it in particular? You know, would there be any challenge that would stand out more than anything else? I think, as a, per, a, a I think from a personal area, the challenge is to kind of to to succeed really more yeah. than anything. You know, to get it to work, and I think the fact that we're still there is probably a testament. <laughs> that's to that, exactly, you know? that's success in uh, itself <laughs> to a point. Most businesses probably aren't. I think it's yeah. A, uh, one of those statistics about the, how many clothes in their first 12 months well, and things like that but, yeah. um, that's probably a, a testament to, um, I think in in uh, in terms of your, you know the the reward that we get from doing what we do it's sometimes it could be a thank you card say mm. for example that we might get to the office uh, or um, we, I think again we have different cases so some of our cases are in terms of, you know you're, 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 you're providing a service for example a, a, you know a personal care service mm. some of them can be more rehabilitative so you know we, ha- we might work with a, a young child who's maybe two or three years old and has a, a physical issue but through maybe you know a, a year or 18 months of physio carried out in the home to the right level that home care package stops and when yes, that home care package yeah. stops it's actually a good thing of for course because yeah, it means you've achieved your goal then, exactly yeah. we've achieved our goal so when, yeah. th- when, you're, when, you're, when you're, your organisation is set up around more so goals and milestones like that it can help everyone I think to keep it kind of a bit more positive and a bit more uh, colourful that you know there are these cases that have good outcomes as yes, well yes of course yeah. and that's, that's kind of important for our staff in general because we do palliative care cases and things like that too which is a, a different area of care so you it's have to know your very, staff and what their fortes idea. are and that's a, that's a difficult mm. one and we have people who specialise for example yeah. in that and that is their they're angels, really, you know. I uh, think you need to be particularly dedicated for that. They're not dedicated is being the right word, but a particular type of personality and temperament, exactly. I think, for it's, that. It's you know? not a job, like, in the, in, the, yeah. in the normal sense of the world. Mm. You know, it's not the normal thing that, pe- you know, 90% of the population get out of bed and get on a train and go into the city centre and you sit in front of a spreadsheet or something like that. Yeah, this is yeah, a totally exactly. different day uh, that uh, you're going to have. Gets, and some yeah. people get incredible... Um, you know, uh, reward themselves out of doing it. The feeling, yeah, of, doing of course it. it would. And, yeah. and then yeah. there are some people who just that wouldn't be their their area of of expertise. Yeah. And um, so everybody's different, but you have to know that that matching of a, of skills and a personality to the people you're looking after is one of the keys to the service. Once you have a high level of competency and everybody can do the job. It's about kind of making sure you have the right people in the right places. Yeah. Well, listen, JJ, it's been brilliant talking to you today. And it's certainly much. good. I could go on a lot longer. <laughs> but uh, just before we go, uh, do you have the details if people want to contact Bluebird and how they get in touch with Absolutely, you? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so our office is in Dublin West is based in Ongar. Mm. We, we have five offices are across Dublin. But the one in Ongar, you can reach at uh, telephone is uh, 0182082520. Okay. And then uh, you can email uh, Dublin West at bluebirdcare.ie and of course our website is just bluebirdcare.ie as well Great, listen JJ thanks a million again for coming into the studio to us and continued success and hopefully four awards out of five the next time we're talking to you <laughs> Thanks Conor Alright